Hello and welcome everyone to the final episode of Obscure Fictional Media. We'll be covering a lot more characters on my personal list, but there'll be no themes this time. Hey now, in case you were wondering why I'm ending Obscure Fictional Media segment, stick around at the end of the video and find out more. Let's do this. The first girl I'd like to talk about is Kiva Andrew from Megas XLR, aired on Cartoon Network from 2004 and 2005, lasting only two seasons. The series revolves around two slackers from New Jersey, the mechanic Coop and his best friend Jamie, who finds a highly technological advanced giant robot that was transported from the future, and they only bought it for two bucks. This cartoon is known to mock and parody a lot of video games and anime conventions and whatever pop culture reference occurred during the early 2000s. Back to Kiva. She is a military pilot from the year 3037 who served in the Earth Coalition, a union of every Earth's nation to fight the invasion force known as the Glorf. So in order to turn the tide of battle, they attempted to send their secret weapon, Megas, two years into the past, 3035, to launch a major offense. However, due to a time flux drive malfunction, sending her back in the early 2000s, where now the show's premise takes place. Kiva's newfound role while stuck in the past is to salvage parts from Megas in order to fix the time flux drive. Kiva also served as the team's backseat navigator and strategist, and training Coop to fight against the recurring enemy, the Glorf. Characteristics and Skills She is an expert mechanic, a tactical genius, and a master hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Kiva is shown to be tough, fearless, intelligent beyond her years, and she has a no-nonsense personality. This is due to her background as a soldier of war in her timeline. But later as the show progresses, she adopts a small sense of humor and has grown comfortably around her peers, showing to be a bit more easygoing and laid back, especially in Season 2. Even with her character growth, Kiva is still confused on 20th century recreational activities and hobbies, like video games, wrestling, junk food snacks, and ping pong from the likes of Coop and Jamie. My opinion on Kiva. She is what you describe as a fish out of water trope, meaning a person who is away from their natural environment. During the show, it's really fun to watch her adapt to the 20th century lifestyle. What I like about Kiva is her red hair, tan skin, tall and fit physique. She's a very attractive woman in her mid-20s. Her art style is a mixture of Japanese anime with American comics. Of course, in the early 2000s, Japanese anime was having a major influence on the West. As you can see, there was a lot of experimenting and blending. The second character I'd like to talk about is a girl named Claire, an action animated cartoon called Motor City. Sadly, it's another short-lived series with so much potential. The premise of Motor City is about a fictional futuristic city of Detroit, where it became a massive and elevated metropolis called Detroit Deluxe. Populated by millions, led by an evil billionaire named Kane, that enforces strict laws and bans personal freedoms among its citizens. This advanced city built over the old Detroit city, where the old setting is both a haven and a danger zone. A group of rebels called the Burners occupy old Detroit, who rise to stop Kane from his conquering campaign. You can probably say that this cartoon is like a mixture of Power Rangers, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Hot Wheels. So, on to Claire. She has this valley girl personality and is a friend of Julian, one of the main burners. Claire is an upper class girl from Detroit Deluxe and is a recurring supporting character. She is just there to support her best friend Julian and her beliefs. Even though she is a minor character, she also serves as a love interest to one of the other burners named Chuck. Despite not showing any interest in him at all, it becomes a running gag. And honestly, in my opinion, if this show had a second season, she may have been a permanent character. But let's talk about her design. What I love about her is that she's kind of built like a supermodel. She's very tall, statuesque, wearing these long heels, and she's lanky too, but she has like broad shoulders. She has this like purple colored motif. She almost looks like candy in my opinion, and like taffy is stretchy, long, and rubbery. This show had so much potential. On to the next girl. Okay. The third character I like to discuss is a psionic technopath named Amanda McKee, aka Livewire from Valiant Entertainment. The original incarnation of Livewire appeared in Harbinger issue number 15, March 1993, who was actually a red-headed white woman that played a major role in the comic series called Secret Weapon in 93. The short summary of the original Livewire was that she belonged to an organization called the Harbinger Foundation, similar to Marvel's X-Men. The only difference is that these people think they are the heroes, but unaware that they're actually working for a bad guy. Anyways, Amanda abandoned the foundation and escaped. Later, joined a team called Secret Weapons. 
it was short-lived because she was proven way too volatile for the new team and general public. The group then surrendered her back to the foundation and she was lobotomized against her will. And that was the end of the original Amanda. Alright alright, I know some of you may ask, why is this redhead turned into a black woman? I've been saying this several times about Valiant Comics. So again, a quick reminder, Valiant Comics closed business back in 1994. There were a few different publishers who took on these properties. Lawyer stuff going on, fair use of certain characters, it was messy. Fast forward 20 years later, relaunched almost all of the original Valiant characters, Livewire being one of them. And also, how are you going to continue a character who's been, well, lobotomized from the last issue? So back to the current Livewire in 2014. Her story begins who became an orphan at a young age that was sent to live in a group home within a hostile environment. It was there later a billionaire visionary and founder of the Harbinger Foundation named Toyo Harada discovers Amanda's psionic talent and took her in his care. For this, Amanda became devoted to Harada thus taking on the name Livewire. Over time for several years with Harada doing all his dirty work, another individual named Peter Stanchek, a powerful telepath and telekinetic joined the foundation. During Peter's stay, Harada's little charade slowly began to unmask his true intentions. Though Livewire is still faithful to Harada's vision, just not the person anymore. Livewire helped Peter escape the foundation and she later self-imposed exile for the betrayal. Let's talk about her powers. Livewire is a technopath, which means that she has the ability to mentally interface, disrupt, and control computers, electronics, and artificial intelligence. She also possesses limited energy projection like magnetism and can create and command any mechanical parts of junk into weapons like shields, armor, and guns. Livewire is also skilled in martial arts and possesses a genius level intellect. What I like about her is that it's simple, to the point, and well, she looks great in those tight spandex. I mean, every shot you see her, there's booty. Booty here, booty there, booty everywhere. And finally, the last girl I like to cover is a dark witch named Yana. From the Record of Grand Crest War, a light novel series and tabletop RPG game written by Ryo Mizuno that ran from August 2013 to March 2018, Record of Grand Crest War was later adapted into a short-lived manga from June 2016 and 2019, and within that, a 24-episode anime series that ran from January 2018 and June in the same year. Grand Crest is an action high fantasy series that takes place in medieval time and its target demographic is young adult men, so expect moderate levels of graphic violence, light sexual elements, and themes of war. I won't get into details of the story as it is something you've already heard many times before. It goes like this, once upon a time, world ruled by chaos, later a mysterious holy man brings order, then rioting factions, later important holy political figures get killed, a power struggle, then burn the witch. Pretty much it. It's somewhat entertaining, it's like a 7 out of 10. Back to Yana. She is what you call chaotic evil, so in her case, she is a chaotic witch. Yana has dark magic abilities that include summoning demons, can shoot highly destructive energy blast, flight with her broomstick, and some levels of fluorokinesis, which is like plant manipulation, so she can summon and control vines from the earth to entangle her enemies. I cannot say much about Yana's backstory since it's well, it's lacking in that department. She's very one dimensional for sure, but her personality is quite colorful. She is narcastic, callous, cruel, uncaring, a hypocrite, and sadistic with a complex to cause as much mayhem as possible. That all reflects on her list of crimes. The list goes on like murder, attempted mass genocide, kidnapping, treason, conspiracy. Even though she is pure evil personified, she's really hot. You know, like average height, curvaceous body with long black hair, orange eyes with light purple lips. Along with her signature attire, a low cut dress exposing most of her cleavage, midriff, and legs. But hey, you know, she's a hot witch. What are you gonna do? If you like those Harley Quinn tights, then by all means, I'm not judging. So, closing in, I'd like to say thank you for watching this video. The reason why I am ending Obscure Fictional Media is because despite all my hard work putting into these videos, I put my heart and soul to them, and it's somewhat stressful too. The reception has been inconsistent and poor. The results shows that I look at the view numbers, it's engagement, and people just tend to fall off. I was thinking about dropping obscure fiction media, but maybe I should just change the format entirely. Like shoving three characters in one video, that's a lot, that's tough. I don't know. Sorry to disappoint you all. Thank you all for watching. Dynamo out.